Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. It is an undisputed fact that aircraft carriers are one of the key components of military defense. This unique vessel is more than what you might be imagining, and in this video, we will unravel every detail of the world's largest multi-billion dollar aircraft carrier. These $4 billion aircraft carriers take several years to build. They are enormously large and span up to 1,000 feet, which is about three times the size of the American football field length and about 250 feet in height. The aircraft carrier has numerous military hardware features, but the design also ensures it provides the comfort that the crew on the ship will need. After all, they're going to be calling this ship their home for an extended period of time. The ship features large gym areas, grocery stores, and excellent air conditioning systems, as well as specially equipped resting and sleeping areas. A retail service specialist handles the grocery stores and other facilities. Profits generated from the sales of items go into funding activities and other facilities to boost the sailor's morale. Additionally, an aircraft carrier will have many grocery stores with several dining facilities serving about 15,000 freshly prepared meals each day. While at sea, the average amount spent daily by an aircraft carrier is $65,000. The general assessment is one of the tools that keep the aircraft carrier safely operating. They often regard the aircraft carrier as a symbol of absolute naval superiority and national strength because it is the most capable offshore combat warship. The regular general assessment is essential to prevent accidents, injuries, or illnesses that could happen on board, and what they can do to lessen the likelihood of them occurring. The identification of potential dangers is crucial since it defines the subsequent course of action. General assessment helps reach flawless precision and thoroughness, which can only be achieved through a systematic procedure. They use the training technique for consistent application. Continuous, flexible, and routine reviews are part of the general assessment of the warship. This enhances safety while minimizing environmental impact. Because risk is never a fixed or stable concept, mitigating risk requires experience, training, and a particular disposition. Human behavior towards issues, general awareness, and ongoing attention on the part of the people engaged are all factors that play an essential role in the decision-making process that an organization goes through while carrying out the general assessment of the warship. Maintenance of aircraft on a carrier deck is crucial to the functionality of aircraft. Flight maintenance and operations at sea are closest to the envelope's edge. It should be no surprise that the Navy has established practices that transcend specific missions, vessels, and technologies. Much like their design, modern aircraft carrier flight operations are a product of their history and continuity of operations. Operations on a big, current aircraft carrier that flies the most advanced planes are so complicated that no one on or off the ship can know the content and order of every task that needs to be done to make sure the planes fly safely, are reliable, and on time. They may perform almost all aircraft maintenance on board. However, some maintenance will require space and is done ashore. 
It is possible to replace a plane's engine and do mechanical work at sea, but it is preferred to perform serious corrosion repairs or repaint on land. As for electrical, electronic, and armament systems, they do maintenance at sea. An airplane requires three stages of maintenance, organizational, intermediate, and depot. These three stages can also be called O-level, I-level, and depot. They can complete the first two on board, while they must complete the third ashore. The F-18 is a configurable military plane. By modifying and adding parts, they can use it for different purposes. This versatility makes the F-18 a valued U.S. asset that helps the Navy and Marine Corps achieve air superiority. It's a fighter and ground attack aircraft. A set of stations on its belly and wings can transport everything from extra fuel tanks to a nuclear bomb. High performance criteria also contribute to the F-18's versatility. The deck operation is essential to make sure these jets land seamlessly. Aircraft on these multi-billion dollar amphibious assault warships are modernly built to have vertical landing capabilities. An example is the F-35, which boasts unrivaled avionics and is powered by the Pratt & Whitney F-135 engine. Widely regarded as the most potent fighter engine currently available, it can go up to 900 nautical miles and reach speeds of up to 1,200 miles per hour. The F-35B is the only one of the three types with short takeoff and vertical landing, or STOVL. This means it can operate equally well on both land and an aircraft carrier. Because it is equipped with STOVL capability, the jet can land vertically, like a helicopter, and take off at relatively short distances. This enables it to function from remote bases with little landing space and a variety of air-capable ships. The F-35B is one of the most expensive jets in the world, with a price tag of over $100 million for each aircraft. Its operations are exclusive to the United States Marine Corps. Another example of an aircraft with vertical landing capabilities is the AV-8B Harrier. The AV-8B Harrier II aircraft is one of the United States' current inventory capable of short takeoff and vertical landing. Since launching in the late 1960s, they have subjected the Harrier to several upgrades which have resulted in more excellent safety, range, and lethality. The Marine Corps' notion of an all-STOVL force relies heavily on the AV-8B as a crucial component. This concept enables Marines to be supported in harsh conditions while operating in expeditionary areas. The Harrier II's thrust of 22,000 pounds allows it to hover like a helicopter and then surge forward at the speeds of a jet. They use it for multiple missions, including attacking and destroying surface and air targets, escorting helicopters, engaging in air-to-air -air defense, providing reconnaissance, and for offensive and defensive support with its arsenal of missiles and bombs. Its adaptability allows it to execute almost any mission. The USS Zumwalt is another example of a U.S. Navy vessel that needs to be covered. The Zumwalt is the flagship of a class of next-generation multi-mission destroyers designed to increase naval strength and power from the sea. These destroyers are for different roles. These ships will have the most advanced military hardware and technology, such as the most advanced electric propulsion system, a wave-piercing tumble-home hull, a stealth design, and the most advanced weapons.
This United States destroyer, which cost $4.4 billion, was hailed as one of the most technologically advanced vessels in the world. Since this warship is a guided missile destroyer, its primary mission is to supply the fleet of the United States Navy with anti-aircraft support. In October 2008, building on the ship first got underway. They launched it in October 2013, but the United States Navy didn't bring it into service until October 2016. This U.S. Navy surface ship is regarded as the most technologically advanced ship in the world. It is a multi-purpose stealth missile destroyer with a back-swept bow and a futuristic hull design called a tumble home, all of which contribute to its low radar profile. The tumble home hull slopes inwards. The ship is the size of two football fields and can carry two helicopters as well as two attack boats. However, it only registers on the radar as a vessel that is 50 feet long. Zumwalt is equipped with two turrets of the advanced gun system that have rocket-assisted, GPS-guided projectiles. Inside the warship is a commercial-sized data center where several systems are automated. The destroyer is also equipped with 80 missile bays from which it can deploy anti-ballistic, surface-to-surface, and surface-to-air missiles. Research into future weaponry such as rail guns and lasers is being conducted by the Navy to be used in this warship. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.